Hey guys, what's going on? It is Dylan back again with another DJI Mavic 2 Pro tutorial video. And today we are going to be going over the intelligent flight mode known as hyperlapse. Now hyperlapse is something that uh, was introduced with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom. And uh, it's really, really, really cool intelligent flight mode that uh, DJI makes it very easy to do all right here inside the DJI Go 4 app. So without any further ado, let's just get started. So on the far left of the screen, you will see the four white icons. You see the little remote. We want to tap on that as that will bring up our intelligent flight mode options. And we are doing hyperlapse, obviously. So we want to tap on hyperlapse. Okay. So the first thing you're going to notice is you're going to get a big horizontal black rectangle down at the bottom of the screen and it says select hyperlapse mode so we have four different modes which are free circle course lock and waypoint now i'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat that the last three are going to be your best friend are going to be the absolute most useful and get you the best smooth most cinematic looking hyperlapses free to me is pretty unusable because with free it's like you're basically just flying your drone manually and you're not going to get near as smooth looking shots using free but since it is a mode and i'm sure it does have its purpose we're going to go ahead and do it and go over it so we're going to select free and as you can see it says set shooting parameters and the aircraft will automatically shoot and render a time lapse video in this mode you can control the flight direction and gimbal angle so we're going to click ok now we have some options here you'll see that we have interval and video length now the interval is how often your drone is going to take photos. For all these examples, I'm just going to keep them on two seconds. So every two seconds, in other words, every other second, it's going to take a picture. So we're gonna click check mark to say that's okay. And then as far as our video length, guys, you can, you can make it longer, but you understand that the longer you want your hyperlapse to be, and these are in seconds, the longer your hyperlapse is going to be, the more pictures it's going to have to take. So just for illustration purposes, I'm going to make these four seconds long. So I'm going to click the OK. So as you can see, for taking a picture at every two seconds and having a hyperlapse that will be a total of four seconds long, it's going to take 300, I'm sorry, it's going to take three minutes and 18 seconds and 100 frames. So I'm going to click go. And now the drone is taking photos automatically every two seconds. And it's just going to sit there and hover until I give it further instruction. Meaning, uh, flying the drone since we're in free mode. On the right stick, guys, I just pushed up, which is going to make the drone fly straight forward. And now I'm actually going to push up on the left stick, which is going to make the drone uh, rise in altitude until I stop uh, pressing up on the left stick. So just to kind of illustrate free mode, I'm going to let go of the left stick. Now it's leveled out. I'm still pushing forward on the right stick. We're still climbing forward. Now I'm actually going to uh, get my gimbal wheel and I'm going to angle down a little bit to get less, less clouds and get more traffic. And in the final four second long hyperlapse video, you're going to see why I'm not a big huge fan of free. Uh, you, you can get really good smooth footage flying manually. You just have to be really, really careful, slow, smooth with your flying, with your piloting. But with the other three modes, the drone can be basically set on quote unquote autopilot and it's going to get very, very, very smooth footage for you. Like, you know what I mean? It's just not going to have, have to worry about it not looking too crisp or jerky and all that good stuff. So I would highly recommend guys using these other three modes. But I wanted to go ahead and um, show you guys, you know, kind of what this did. Now I'm going to let go with the right stick. And now I'm going to push right on the right stick. And just showing you guys and illustrating the whole point and purpose that we are in free mode. Meaning that we can freely fly the drone. We can change the gimbal pitch, the, ca the camera angle. We can lower altitude, raise altitude. You get it. You got free manual control over the drone. But whenever we, after all these pictures are stitched together after every two seconds and you have a three second long hyperlapse, it's not gonna look that good. And of course, as soon as this is done shooting, I'll show you guys the uh, three second hyperlapse that we get in each mode. And again, I'm just going to do three seconds on all of them 
because I just want them to all match up as far as the uh, the amount, the interval that we shoot, and then also um, the length of the hyperlapse. I could do them longer, but guys, that's going to uh, take more battery. That's another thing to note and keep take you know kind of keep in mind is that these. Uh, these hyperlapses they can take a whole lot of battery because they take a lot of time to do especially if you want a longer hyperlapse that's why i'm only doing three hyperlapses so i've just kind of been manually flying the drone cruising around went up in altitude went down in altitude went left went right changed my camera gimbal uh my, sorry my camera angle and so you guys will see what i mean we are 88 photos in 89 photos in getting close to 90 right there we just hit 90 got about 10 more photos guys eight more and then uh, we will be done with free and I will show you guys what that looks like and why the other three modes are way better to use when it comes to getting your hyperlapses. Two more photos, one more. Okay, so when it's done, as you can see, it says synthesizing video. What that means is it's basically rendering the, the pictures that it took, the 100 photos, and it's actually putting together. Now it says video synthesis complete. I just tapped on that little arrow down in the lower left corner and now we have our other modes. Now we are going to select circle. I really like circle. Circle's a pretty cool one, but still not my favorite. But here's what circle does. Okay, so we have these uh, kids playing tennis here, so we're just going to use this. So basically, I'm gonna tap on circle, and as you can see, it says select a static subject and the aircraft will automatically capture and render a time-lapse video centered on the subject. Exit this mode by moving the control sticks. So first things first, got to make sure you have your interval set and your video link set, which I'm going to use the same for all of these. And then the other thing option you have is you have counterclockwise or clockwise, meaning which way the drone will, uh, will travel or, you know, rotate. So I'm going to draw a box now around this tennis court and I'm going to have it go counterclockwise and then I'm going to hit go. Now, as you can see, it says, do not operate the aircraft during subject position calculation. So basically what's going on is, is it's making sure that it knows and understands what our uh, point of interest, our subject or object is going to be, which are the tennis courts. And now, as you can see, we are back to the drone automatically all on its own, taking photos every two seconds. And the difference in the this mode and the other two that will follow this and the last one that we had is this is kind of on a quote unquote autopilot. We're not controlling the drone at all it's doing this all on its own so the finished product should be a lot more smooth and cinematic looking than that other really jerky not very appealing uh hyperlapse that we just got a little bit ago when we used free uh the free mode so of course we're not going to make a full circle around the tennis courts being that we're only doing a three second time lapse but you absolutely could do a, uh, a complete circle depending on your radius, diameter, your, um, your intervals that you're taking photos, and also how long you want your hyperlapse. There's just so many variables, and that's what's pretty cool about these hyperlapses is that you have a uh, opportunity to uh, really get some very unique hyperlapses depending on all the settings that you choose to use. So drone is still shooting photos we are just about to 40 i tell you what guys i'm going to go ahead and speed this up in the editing so you won't have to sit here and uh, wait that long for this okay so now we are 80 photos in have 20 more to take and then we will have all of our 100 photos to make up our three second long hyperlapse using the circle mode and then it's when it's done it's automatically going to synthesize and i will obviously i'll show you guys the uh hyperlapse that it put together using the circle mode so nine more shots and uh i'll be sure to show you guys that one in circle mode and then we will move on to the next hyperlapse mode which is probably my absolute favorite it is course lock two more photos and then i will show you guys here is the circle time lapse. All right, now let's move on to the next mode to do that. Down in the lower left corner, you see the little white arrow pointing left. We're going to tap on that, and then we're going to hit course lock. And again, this is my favorite uh, hyperlapse mode. Let's find something that we could use. Let's just say. Let's
let's use this funeral home here, okay? So what we're gonna do is, it's a lot like circle in that you need to, you don't have to actually select a point of interest or subject or object. I could just click course lock, and you can see here it says course lock. Regardless of orientation, the aircraft will fly in a set direction and shoot and render a time-lapse video. Okay, so basically right now in the bottom right, you see that little icon? I could hit that and then just hit go and the drone would fly straight the way it's facing. But I'm gonna click it again to unlock my course. Let's say that I want this building right there with the red crosshair is on to be my subject, object, or point of interest. I can draw a box around it. Actually, first it says we need to, I'm gonna do it again. Please first determine the course. So say I want my drone to fly straight this way okay we're gonna in the lower right corner we're gonna lock the course by clicking on that little icon and as you can see it says course has been locked okay so now I can rotate my drone and find what I want it to actually track which is this funeral home building I'm gonna draw a box around it I'm gonna hit go then watch what happens guys what's happening here is it's going to keep that funeral home that building there in the center frame but I can toggle my mode here and you can see where my drone is and it's going it started where that green ball is and it's going to end where that red ball is and the blue line just shows you the direction that's the direction my drone's going to fly while taking photos every two seconds and while keeping this building in center frame so there's just so much like going on behind the scenes so much work um, very smart internal programming going on that DJI is doing all for us and it just comes right off the micro SD card if it's not a very very windy day it comes off looking pretty smooth and pretty cool and cinematic of course in post-production you can always do some warp stabilizer to help further stabilize it and uh, maybe that's another uh, video upcoming in the future that we can do uh, someday but for now we're 30 shots in using the course lock hyperlax mode and of course I'll show you guys how that turned out as soon as this is done but for now I'm gonna fast forward and editing a little bit to save you guys from having to watch all this all right guys now we have about 10 more photos nine more photos to take and then we will be done with course lock hyperlapse mode and we will be moving on to the very last one I hope I'll have enough battery before it wants me to return to home three more photos here for course lock two more one more photo and here is how the course lock mode hyperlapse turned out. Pretty cool stuff right there, right? So anyways, now we're going to move on to the very last one. In the lower left corner, we're gonna click the little white arrow pointing left, and it is waypoint. Now, waypoints, the way it works is you pick two waypoints, and a waypoint is actually where your drone physically is. So right now, uh, I have my drone you know, hovering here, and we're gonna actually use this as the first waypoint. So right there, the big blue box with the white plus sign, I'm gonna tap it. And guys, this that when you set your waypoint, it takes your altitude, position, and camera facing orientation into account. So now I'm actually going to fly to another point to where I want my drone to go. And we can just call this good right here. And I'm actually going to take my drone up in altitude a ways. I have it face this way and my camera face down a little bit then i'm going to get click the big blue box to click add and now we have our two waypoints you could add more if you wanted to but just to, for the sake of battery i'm just going to do those two now do you see that where it says in order when you tap that again it says reversed so i'm actually going to have it do reverse which means it's going to start at this second waypoint and the drone's going to fly backwards to the first it also saves battery from your drone having to fly back to the starting point so now I'm gonna hit go. And guys, I use those same settings as far as um, uh, three or four seconds. I can't remember which one it was for how long my hyperlapse is gonna be. And it's as far as the, um, oh, I can't think of the word right now. I'm drawing a big, huge blank interval. As far as the interval goes, it's still at two seconds. So as you can tell, very, very slowly, my drone is flying backwards and it's starting at waypoint two and going to go to waypoint one. So it's going to uh, decline in altitude. It's gonna go down, further down. And also the, uh, the camera angle or pitch or gim gimbal angle or pitch is going to also change a little bit. 
since I changed them from between the two waypoints. So just like on the other ones, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys. And then I will uh, show you guys how the waypoint mode of hyperlapse turned out. Okay guys, so I just now noticed I must have done this hyperlapse a second shorter because it's only taking, or actually what the deal is, is since I did a, a, a waypoint, the points might have been shorter in between than the other, you know, where I travel on the other modes. So it's only doing 75 photos, but of course I could have changed that by making it, let's say I wanted an eight or nine second long uh, hyperlapse. So again, there's just so many different scenarios that could be played out depending on your interval uh, and the mode you're in and how long you want the hyperlapse and all that good stuff so we are just about done we have oh about seven more shots here and then I will be sure to show you guys how the waypoint hyperlapse turned out two more shots and then at the far right if you'll see where the uh, where the uh, pause button is the two red uh, vertical lines it's going to render this and put it together and boom now I'm showing you guys uh, the how it turned out so that's very very cool stuff and uh, that does it as far as the four different hyperlapse mode I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as a matter of fact as I was sitting there thinking of it I'm actually going to at some point put out a separate video for each hyperlapse mode so we can do longer hyperlapses and I can talk uh, get a little bit more deeper into each one and the different options and all that good stuff So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned hope you learned something from it If you did, please be sure to smash that thumbs up button Also, please be sure to subscribe as I will continue to have more DJI Mavic 2 Pro videos upcoming in the future guys I enjoyed it. This is Dylan. There's that low battery